Hello, this is the start of a web series where we talk about testing strategies for the ACS for Grand Point Screen final. Um, while we're primarily focused on that exam, we'll also going to use these testing strategies for the, um, the GRE, the MCAT, the DAT, etc. Okay, so um, one of the things that a lot of students would fail to realize on, on exams like this is that you don't have to solve the problem um, to get the correct answer. You just sometimes need to figure out what isn't the answer, knock those out, and then focus you down on the, um, you know, maybe the two that could be. Um, okay, so, and if you can knock, again, one of those out, you'll be fine. The, uh, um, and even if you don't completely understand, um, don't know what they're talking about, or, or can't remember that question, right, you may be able to knock out two, say, two of the answers. So then you got to um, for the test. So we'll talk about these kind of strategies in, the, in this web series. Um, so first up is uh, nomenclature. Okay, so for this one, um, when you're getting a molecule and you have to figure out the structure, the first thing you want to do is don't focus on the E and Z. Okay? Um, just focus on the like, 4 fluoro hat 3 e okay? So what's happening here, right? So the first thing to do is always look at the main chain. Okay? Um, so that might be able to knock some out before you even do anything else. So if you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, right? It's 5, 6, 7. Don't forget that when you're finding that main chain, you can go up these side chains. You can't go backwards, but you can go up them. Okay? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So we know it's not this one because it was, it's only 6 carbons long. So there we go. We knocked one out before you can do it all that. The next thing to do is to say, okay, we know this ene, right, means it's a carbon carbon double bond. Where is it at? It's at carbon three. Okay, so you have one, two, three. Right? So carbon one is going to be the ends closest to um, the uh, C1 is going to be the ends closest to that functional group, that higher priority functional group. So, so for here it's going to be, for all of these, it's going to be right there. So one, two, three. Right? So it starts at carbon three. One, two, three. Right? It starts at carbon three. So that doesn't do the same. Next thing is to is to look at the chlorine. Right? Where is that hanging off of? It's hanging off of carbon four. Right? So here we're good because that's carbon four. Here, ah, notice how it's hanging off of carbon three, so we can't do that one. Here it's, again, it's going to be a carbon four, so we're good. So we're really just down to these two. Before even thinking about E and Z, um, right? We've narrowed it down to the to two. Okay? So for E Z, right? What we have to do is we have to look at this. Um, the, the, these two groups that are hanging off of here versus the two groups that are hanging off of here, and we're going to say which is the higher and which is the lower priority. We're going to use the same priority rules that we did for R and S. Okay, so we're, I usually end up saying, go ahead and slice that down here. Right? There's three bonds shown, right? So the fourth one is has to be a, a hydrogen. Right? So off of this card, right? So it's a carbon versus a hydrogen, right? Carbon's heavier, right? So it's going to be uh, this is high versus now on this side we have chlorine versus carbon. Right? Chlorine's heavier, um, so this is going to be the high. This is going to be the low. So we take a look at that. Look where the highs are, right? They're on the same side, right? They are on the same side, right? In a, in a bad German accent, right? So this is this is the Z. Okay. So that's the Z, because they are on the same side. Now for um, this one here. Um, say the IUPAC name, that just means the, um, uh, the just the technical name for it. That's all it, that's all it asks you for. And so for here, right, the uh, um, first thing to do, right, figure out that main chain. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, right? You could go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, right? But it's, it's going to end up being the same. So here's the main chain right here. Up, 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 up. Okay, so we can't. So the, really, the, the bigger question is which end is, is carbon one? Is it this one or this one? And it turns out that it's um, the general rule of thumb for the priority. There's some subtlety in there, but is that oxygen uh, functional groups are going to have prior, higher priority than nitrogen, which is going to have higher priority than carbon um, functional groups. So here, and the more bonds you have, the, the higher the, the fun, uh, higher the priority. So. Uh, carboxylic acids and esters are going to have a higher priority than, say, a ketone uh, because, and 
canister has three oxygen bonds for the patient and two on the teacher. So the, uh, um, and this way, you know, these two carbon oxygen bonds take priority over the two carbon carbon bonds. So that means that this is going to be carbon one. So it's going to be, so the number is going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Mm -hmm. So the ketone is going to be a two. So we can knock out these two mm -hmm. because we know so even if you, again, if you don't remember what E and Z is, you at least down to these, um, these two, okay? And vice versa, if you knew how to do E and Z, right, you could at least get it down to, say, you know, the, uh, again, the one of the, you know, this, you know, if it's E, you know, it's here and here. Or in this case, it's Z, or, or Z, here and here, right? Again, you know, close those two pieces. So for here, right, so in order to be able to do the E and Z, Make sure you put in those hydrogens. So this is going to be the high, right? Because we're looking at carbon versus oxygen, so that's a high. So for so for this one, right, there's the um, hydrogen versus carbon. Right? So now the high is down here, right? So the high is up on this side, low on this side. They are not on the same side, so this has to be E. So. So what is the IUPAC name for the following compound? So for this one, for um, the uh, so for benzenes, there are some common names for these things that um, that IUPAC says is fine. Um, there are things like phenols, um, toluenes, xylenes, um, anilines, uh, c-quinones, um, benzaldehydes, benzoic acids, things like that. Those are always good to know. And when you have those priority rules. Wherever that functional group is, that where you do the naming, um, is going to be that where that functional group, that carbon on the benzene is going to be number one, no matter what. Okay, and then you have to look at the um, where the where the other um, groups are. Now there is some, there are some priority rules on on those, but a good rule of thumb is everything is going to be a, have a higher priority than the toluene and xylene. So again, so we have something else. That one's going to be the, um, the, the higher priority. Okay? So, but that's so not too bad. Okay, so, so for here, if you want to draw these in, you see it's pretty interesting. So, when you're looking at the functional groups, okay, do you have the, the sort of um, um, higher priority or the, the special group, right? So, we've got this one here. Um, we have that one, which would be a uh, which would be an analyte. You could also say, well, there's a toluene in here, or heck, there's an orthoxylene in here, right? But this aniline um, group is going to have a higher, uh, a higher priority than a, a methyl group. A, uh, a methyl combination, stuff like that. So, so it's going to definitely be the aniline in here, right? So, so, it's gonna, so we can knock out this one, this B and C. Going to be the animal. So for here, what you need to do is you say, okay, if you do the numbering, right, it's always good to do clockwise and counterclockwise, but we know this is going to be one. So one, two, three, four, five, six, right? So, so for here, it's three, four. If I were to do counterclockwise, it would be one, two, three, four, five, six. Right? So this would be four, that could be five, right? So three, four, four, five, right? So you want to get the, the lowest number set, so just add them up. So seven versus nine. This is a lower number, so you're going to want to use those. So there we go. So you can use that trick of, of when you're setting the, the uh, lower number set, just add them up um, for, for any number. Okay. Now for this one, right? So with that, so you got to find. So you got to know your functional groups. There's no way around it, right? So, so you need to find a molecule that has an aldehyde that has aldehyde, ester, and carboxylic acid. Okay, there could be other ones, okay, so they got so then you tricked it. Maybe there's four functional groups, but you're looking for just those three. Okay, so here, oh, we got a carboxylic acid, right, an ester, right, carboxylic acid, because it's a carbon, C double bond O, and again, an OH. Okay. C double bond O, O, um, right, O carbon, right, so that's an ester. And then here's the aldehyde, because it's a C double bond O, and it's an OH. Okay, 
Okay, so this is technically it, right? But if you wanted to look through these, right? So you got an aldehyde, you got the ester, and here you got here you have the CH two in between. It kind of looks like a carboxylic acid, right? But since you have that CH two in here, this is a ketone and an alcohol, so it can't be that. Here you got the alcohol, right? So you have the aldehyde, right? So that that's still alcohol. Is the ester, okay? So we're missing, we're missing the uh, carboxylic acid. Here we have a carboxylic acid. Okay? Um, we have the aldehyde, but this is a ketone, right? Because there's just carbons on the other side. So it ends up being that. So you can just sort of go through.